Hi guys. Thank you for joining me today after an hour more sleep. Uh, everybody in Canada and the US were, were doing daylight savings time. I know some countries don't do it, but today is the daylight savings savings time so we fall forward so we get one extra hour sleep which is great for me um anywho i'm just grateful you've joined me today uh this this sermon is called a point of connection let's pray father i thank you for what you've done today and i thank you for what you're about to do today speak to me speak to me and permeate the atmosphere with your love and your spirit in the name of jesus speak to us all at the same time oh god from my mouth speak something that will change lives today change hearts and set people on the right path today in the name of jesus amen hi guys um i've been reading a book lately and this book has got me thinking of uh, miscommunication or non-communication. And yes, I will get to a moment of connection in, in a few minutes, but um, the Lord unexpectedly had this on my heart. Um, I was thinking of a certain book, so I, I'm in the middle of reading this book, and I was thinking of miscommunication and wrong communication and how our whole lives can be screwed up with he sh with he said she said and all of that stuff and um i just want to let you know today if a person is um talking about you and and your um, and you're in this situation where a lot of people are talking about you um, and you you don't before you make any decisions about that person any life altering relational decisions make sure you get to the truth because a lot of relationships are wrecked because of miscommunication and non-communication and whatever. And sometimes if naysayers are talking about you and strangers are talking about you, you can leave that. You can leave that alone, let them talk, it doesn't affect you. But if the relationship is directly affecting you and you hear something go to the person and talk it out with the person never make serious life-altering decisions without talking about talking it out with the person and getting their side because if you don't get their side and just take other people's word and make life altering decisions because of that, it can wreck your life. And a lot of people are, are stuck in miscommunication or non-communication because they have too many people in their ears saying this and that and they let their their whatever relationship be crowded um by other by other people um i've 
I heard of a story um, years ago um, where this this girl was about to get married and she was all set for her wedding and um, somebody had a dream of of not marrying that man that you told the woman to not marry that man or whatever. And she broke up with the person and she was miserable for years. And uh, yeah, just because of someone else talking in, in her ears and saying, God gave me a dream, don't marry that man. First of all, I sub I never one thing about prophecy. If God has given somebody a dream about you and not told you first, it's not from God. Because God is not the author of confusion. Prophecy does not come to surprise you. It comes as confirmation most times. So whatever God t tells a legitimate prophet does not come to surprise you. It comes to confirm the word that God is already giving you in your spirit, in your heart, because God will talk to you first about your life before he will talk to another person. And prophecy will come to confirm that word, not to inform. Um, not to inform you, but to confirm a word that God has been speaking to you either through his written word, either through something else. He, he doesn't send prophecy to surprise you. So if some, let's say if some guy says, um, the Lord told me this, and the Lord told me that, and the Lord told me that, and God hasn't told you, be very, very, very careful about that because um, that could be a cause, that is a cause of spiritual manipulation. And a lot of people have been manipulated by that. Oh, God told me this about you, or God told me this about you. God told me that about you. Be very, very, very careful. If God hasn't told, you about you, I would just tell that person uh, to go with their prophecy and whatever, because God will never tell another person something first which he hasn't told you. Never, ever, ever. But aside from God telling you something. Um, sometimes in relationships, you have too many ears talking to you about your relationship, about your friendship, about your about your this and about your that and you don't find out from the other person. I've been guilty of this too, and it has wrecked some relationships of mine when you, get, when you let other people um, talk about your experience and you don't get it straight from the horse's mouth. It's best when you hear something to go to the person and get it straight from the horse's mouth and to communicate with that person and really listen to that person. This is not my sermon, but God really wanted me 
to talk about that because I was thinking about that while reading this book. How missed communication and non-communication and letting the voices of other people talk in your ear without going uh, to the person that it really that that it really um, matters about can wreck relationships. It's best even how hard it is and how tough it is to go straight to the person. And it may not be easy, but it will be better in the long run to get to get it straight from the from the person. Now, if it's just meaningless goth, gossip, you can just let it go. If it's just social media gossip, you can just let it go. But if it's an essential part of a relationship and you're hearing something that your that your partner or that your spouse is doing something and you don't get it from the source and you just let other people uh, dip, put their nose into where it doesn't belong and you take their word without talking to that person, it can really wreck relationships. It can wreck friendships. It can wreck family relationships. It can really wreck relationships. And the faster you deal with those little foxes that are trying to spoil your vine, the faster you can move on. And avoidance is not a strategy. Avoidance just keeps it going for longer. So don't avoid the person communicate with the person and talk with the person. And I know it's difficult, but in the long run, it'll serve you. It'll serve you well to just have open communication. And have it face to face if you can, but, or by phone. Don't do it on social media or by text or where everybody can see it because it's not everybody's business. It's between you and that person. And solve it between you and that person. There's, unless you need professional help from a counselor, there's no need to bring his friends or her friends in it. But you can just solve it together. And if you need professional counseling, like a marriage or something else, that's different. But if you're bringing all these people into your relationship, the more people have to say about your relational problems, whether it be family relationships or romantic relationships or any kind of relationships, the more opinions you'll get is the more often, the more confusion um, you'll have to deal with. So it's best I found in my own personal life to just let it be uh, the core people uh, conversation with the core people involved if that makes any sense if the people with the people actually involved in the situation And on to, on to my plan sermon that is called the point of connection. That was all just side notes. What I, what I was thinking about reading this book. Um, but 
Here's my actual sermon, and it's called The Point of Connection. I was thinking of I was thinking of uh, Halloween, the whole Halloween thing, and you know, you know, I don't, I don't believe in celebrating Halloween. I don't believe believers should celebrate Halloween because it's, because it starts from a demonic place. That's my personal opinion. I know not all people have that opinion. Not all Christians have that opinion. That's my personal opinion. Just so you know where I'm coming from when I'm doing this sermon. So, so just so we're clear on that. I'm not saying that should be everybody's opinion, but I'm saying it's, it's my personal opinion and how I grew up. So I was thinking of, but instead of shunning Halloween and knocking and locking our doors and just not participating in it, it, the Lord gave me an interesting solution. He says, instead of locking out culture, create something that runs counter to culture. Counter to culture means it, it takes the part of culture that culture knows and flips it on its head. A few, year, a few years ago, God said to me about my ministry and the ministry that he's put in, inside of me. He said, use what they know to teach them what they don't. He said, Use what they know to teach them what they don't. And a few years ago, God gave me a solution kind of to the Halloween thing. Um, for those of you in other countries, not in Canada or the U.S., that don't have Halloween and don't know what it is, basically, it's one night a year on October 31st, um, kids, usually little kids, dress up in costume and go from house to house and, and they say trick or treat and then they get candies or chocolates or something. And they usually go around their neighborhood. So that's what Halloween is for those of you in other countries that don't. Uh, celebrated or don't know what it is. So anyway, so I was, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be awesome if, if instead of walking in costume and asking for candy, if, if the church would get kids to go out and instead of asking for candy, giving, giving something away to, to people from house to house and singing praises to ha teaching the little kids song that they can sing, that they sing at church. And when the person opens the door expecting to get candy, they get a carol sing. And then, not carol, but they get a, a praise sing from these little kids. All, instead of dressed in costume, we can, they can be dressed in white and go from house to house and sing these praises to people, and then we can ask them if they want a card for our church, or if they don't, that's okay. We can, then we give them cookies, or uh, we get, we have a big thing of cookies, and we give them one or two. 
that that will flip it on its head. So instead of um, instead of asking for things, instead of them giving us candy, they get a song and they also get some kind of dessert, like a cookie or, so, or something. And if they want, they get a little pamphlet for our church and invited to come. If they want, we ask them. And if, if they don't want that, it's okay. It will plant love in a space where there, where there is, is hate and where there is um, a celebration of fear and a celebration of the devil and, the, and, the, and certain sacrifices that go on on that, on that night underground. So instead of celebrating fear and instead, instead of celebrating hate and all those things, we're, we're, we're using what they know to teach them something that they don't. We're teaching them giving, we're teaching them love, we're spreading joy and peace on a night designed to designed to spread fear traditionally. Um, Cause um, the church has shut out culture for too long. We've ignored culture. We've pretended like it doesn't exist when we stay in the four walls of the church, we just pretend like it doesn't exist. And the Lord is saying, not only it, it does it exist, but it's taking over some of your lives. And by ignoring culture, or Jesus over culture, instead of using Jesus to transform culture, we are just using Jesus as a crutch to hide from culture, not using his word and his voice and his instruction to transform culture. Jesus called us to transform the narrative, not hide the narrative. People have been hiding from the narrative for too long. And the Lord wants us to stop hiding from the narrative and, and use the good news to transform the culture. I was watching Mike Todd um, uh, I was watching Mike Todd um, on the Elevation Youth podcast, and um, he was talking about you using the music that they they like um, the world listens to for God. He said God didn't create that music. No, 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 that's wrong. He said. God created that music, but the world is using it for their own. But what we need to do is take it back. What we need to do with all these things is not hide from them. It's not run from them. It's not pretend like it's not going on. But what we need to do is take it and transform it back to its original intention, which is, which is to glorify God. So by giving instead of taking and loving instead of hating, we'll show people a different way to be a different way that, that we 
we celebrate that night. We don't we don't lift up the devil and his agenda. We lift up Jesus and his we glorify God. And any chance you can get to glorify God, he is overjoyed with. And I think it's about time that the church stop sticking their head in, in the sand like an ostrich, but and opening their hearts to people and asking God, how do we turn this around for your glory? How do we do this for you? that you get glory out of it, that you get fame out of it, that you get love out of it. I can sense that, but what that's what he wanted to do. When Jesus came, he came to upset the narrative. He came to, to transform not only our lives, but he, he came to transform the lives of people who were looking for another Messiah. Um, he came to just shake the whole world. And I think that generally Christians are afraid to transform. We, we don't mind going to church. We don't mind doing, doing all that stuff in there. But in there is not where it's needed. But uh, outside is where it's needed. People need the love of Jesus. People need to know that restoration is possible, freedom is possible, that Jesus didn't only die for Christians, Jesus died for everybody, whatever culture you are, whatever sexual orientation you are, whatever, whatever business you're involved in, he died for you, whatever tax bracket you're in, he died for you, what, wherever you sit, he died for you and, and he rose for you and he loves you so, so crazy and he's crazy in love with you. No matter where you sit, no matter what you've done, you could be the most horrendous murderer. You could be the most innocent child. He loves you just the same. And, he, and he's waiting to transform your life with his power and and he wants you to know that you may have made mistakes you may have made wrong turns um along the way but there is nothing nothing that you could have done to separate you from the love of God. There's nothing that you could have done, first of all, that God didn't know about, second of all, to separate you from his love, third of all, that you can't come back from. The world The world will say there, there are things that you can't come back from, but God's, God is saying to someone right now, there is nothing that you can't come back from. And he is knocking at the door of your heart right now when he's saying, I want you, let me in. He's saying, if you don't trust me right now, that's okay. If you don't, if you don't um, feel you could trust me right now, that's okay. If you don't feel that you want me right now, that's okay. If you don't, if you don't feel that that um, that you're ready right now, it's okay. But just know I'm always here. Know that I'm always here, and I love you. And I think in 
I think in church we make a grave mistake. I understand why we do it. I just don't think it's what Jesus would do. We we make people think that they at the altar call they have to make that decision right now, right then today. But truthfully, they don't. It would, if you, if you feel like you need um, more information or to understand it more or to, or to, you feel like you're not ready, that's okay. He'll always be there. But I, I'm telling you that you, that you don't have to, um, there is never going to be a certain amount of readiness that you're ready to receive Christ. You are always going to be working on something. You're never going to feel good enough. You're, you're never going to feel that it's okay. I feel okay now I'm ready to receive Christ. You're always going to be working on yourself. And the thing with God is, when you accept him, he'll help you work on yourself because he created you and he knows um, he knows the path you take. And he is ready to receive you whenever you want. And, and there's no specific prayer um, to let him into you. Love. Just pour your heart out to him, whatever you have to say. He wants to hear it because he loves you. And like a good father, he's ready to receive you whenever you're ready to receive him. And you can pray with him to him however you feel to pray. There are no specific ways to pray. He just wants you and your heart, and he just wants your heart um, to be to be broken before him. And when I say broken, I mean surrendered. I don't mean uh, totally obliterated and whatever. He just he just wants you. Without your pride, even if you do have pride, he wants you anyway. He'll take you whatever way he can get you, whatever way you are. He says, come as you are, come prideful, come broken, come with all the money, come broke, come. He says, I just want you, whatever way you are, I just want you. And we've created a disservice to, to tell you that one simple prayer will fix everything. It won't real, realistically. But what, what, what it does, it says, Lord, come in. Come into all my brokenness. Come into everything and fix and make me yours. Make me clean, make me whole. And it just lets him in. And then once he comes in, he starts doing uh, the healing work on you. Whatever, whatever you need to be healed from, whatever brokenness you're dealing with, he'll help you with that. Whatever relationships you're dealing with, he'll help you with that. And he'll bring the, the right people and resources into your life. And he'll train you to hear his voice. Well, is it easy all the time? No. It's not easy all the time, but it's well worth it. Because you'll have a partner in your life. You'll have someone always in your corner. Someone who will never leave you. Someone who will always understand you. Someone who will pick you up 
when you fall. Will you make mistakes? Yes. Will you screw up sometimes? Yes. But he'll always be there when you do. And he'll mold you and make you into the person. He just wants you because he loves you. He wants you a part of his family because he wants to show you who you are. He wants to show you how much he loves you. He loves you so much, I can't even describe it. And he wants me to just tell you just wherever you are at this moment, just reach out to him in your own words, in your own way. Like most preachers pray the sinner's prayer. I don't do that because I think in the moment of salvation, the Lord doesn't want, it, want me to want to hear me pray on behalf of you. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your heart. He wants to hear wherever, wherever you are is okay. If, if you're not sure about this, it's okay to say, Lord, I'm just not sure. Something that she's saying is totally grabbing at me, but I'm just not sure of this thing. It's okay to say, Lord, I'm a skeptic. Lord, I'm an atheist, but something she's saying really is getting at me. And because when I pray, it assumes that you are at the place where I am, or I'm assuming that I know exactly where you are. Um, because they say, um, pray that, uh, Lord, I believe you died and rose again. But what if you don't believe that? What if you're skeptical? What if, what if something I said just pricks at you, but you don't know anything about the death and resurrection? of Jesus Christ, and that learning will come in time. All he wants is you. He doesn't want anything else, even if you're totally skeptical. But something I said is talking at you. That's all he wants. He wants to love on you like crazy. If you're not sure, that's okay. That's okay. And it's not my responsibility to make you sure. Or to say, Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. So what if you do? What if you're not sure? And wherever you are, he wants you. Whether you have a lot of money, he wants you. Whether you're poor as a church vice, on government assistance, he wants you. If you're black, he wants you. If you're white, he wants you. If you're gay, he wants you. If you're straight, he wants you. If you don't know what you are from day to day, he wants you. He wants you because you're his precious child. He wants you because he loves you. And through the process of time, he will make you into what he wants you to be. But that will be a process that he will take you through. And everybody's process will be different. Will be different. There's no set way that God changes us. He uses our personalities, our little perks, our gifts to um, to point us in the way he wants us to go. He's made us perfectly. He's made us like awesomely. And will we have to change some things? Yes, but he'll direct us what to change and how to change. But he will, and he will also bring people and resources into our lives. Um, 
And thank you, Lord. So, guys, I want to thank you today for joining me for this sermon. See you later. Bye.